get into these. Welcome back to my channel and if you're new hi I'm Sin and welcome to my channel I hope you go down and subscribe and stick around but today's video is going to be a business Q&A basically I put questions on my Instagram story my snapchat story and on my little Facebook story saying you know if you want to ask me any questions about my business Sin City Beauty I will answer them in a YouTube video and so here we are and basically I'm recording off of my phone because I just didn't feel like bothering with my camera right now so I wrote down the questions on my little notebook thing so I'm gonna be reading them from there and so I'm gonna go go ahead and like jump into the questions so the first question that I got down <coughs> was what made me decide to start selling lashes and hair so basically I always been into like lashes I've been into I've been into lashes and hair since like high school the beginning of high school maybe I started wearing lashes like ninth grade started wearing hair 10th grade and basically I realized they on we only have around here is like hair store basic two dollar lashes and stuff like that so I wanted to bring you know a variety of lashes to where I stay at not too many people was doing that at the time so I just took about I probably got like maybe five ten pair of lashes and just started going from there that was the easiest thing for me to invest in by myself at that time and then later on I invested into getting hair to start doing it because I just wanted to be I just wanted to bring that to my little area because we didn't really have that so that's really what made me decide to start selling it because I really enjoyed it. I really like playing around with hair and lashes. So I just decided why not, you know, flip it into a business and make some money off of it. So that's why I decided to start selling it. Um, does the money I make affect my financial aid negative, negatively? Honestly, no, because technically my business isn't legal like it's not out there as in oh Talisa McCollum owns Sin City Beauty and she makes a million dollars so she really doesn't need financial aid like financial aid doesn't know that I have a business they don't know what I do so it doesn't really affect that honestly I still get the same amount of financial aid I've been getting and I had my business before I started college so it doesn't affect me negatively negatively my next question what was the hardest part about getting started honestly the hardest part about getting started was me battling myself about doing it because I was just basically like, do I think that I can do this? Like, I'm sitting here, I see, I see it as in me doing it like I could do this, I could do this, I could do this. But at the same time, it was just like that other side of me that was just like, can you really do it? Like, that was really it. Like, when it comes to me and business stuff, I literally like, I jump right in. Like, if I have the funds to do it, I'm going to jump right in. So, like... All of that getting started like that wasn't the hard part the hard part was just me being in my head like am I gonna fail because I, I just do not like failing like if I feel like I'm gonna fail at something I'm not gonna try honestly that's a bad characteristic but I'm honestly like that like if I feel like I'm gonna fail I'm not gonna do it but when it came to the business like my mama kept telling me like just go ahead and do it you know you've been doing it you've been doing it little but let's let's blow it up like I, I believe in you so she pushed all of that you know negatively on my head and we did it so really the hardest part was just me battling myself but really everything else was, was easy for me so next question how did I come up with my with the name of my business this is a funny story so basically when I was younger I really had the career goal of being a stripper <laughs> That was my career goal when I was younger. I wanted to be a stripper. I wanted to make all that money that they was making. Like, I wanted it. So, I was just like, well, I'm about to be Cinnamon. Like, that's my name. I'm going to be Cinnamon. And I was literally calling myself Cinnamon. Like, I can't remember the exact name. It was my Instagram name and everything. Like, Cinnamon. It was Cinnamon something. And so, then I finally got to, like, high school. 
and I was just like cinnamon kind of childish so I cut cinnamon down to sin so I started going by sin as you know my YouTube channel is simply sin um my modeling name was sin dolls like I was just sin and when it came time for me to do my business I, I knew I wanted to do a beauty business and I just decided well sin city is where it happens at you know Las Vegas that's where everything goes down so why not sin city beauty like you know just that's just where it came from literally i just threw a whole bunch of stuff together and it came out to where i liked it so now i'm my business is sin city beauty all from starting with a stripper's name <laughs> so that's how i i found out the name well not found out that's how i came up with the name for my business um next question what's the first thing i should do when starting any when starting my business but well the first thing i say do is research 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 like research research vendors research is it something unique to your area research if you feel like people in your area are looking for those type of things research if it'll be beneficial for you to do on hand drop ship however like research don't just jump head like head first like research research and before you go ask somebody what to do like should I do this? Should I do that? Research first so that you can ask them a more, a more, not personal question, but a more in-depth question. Not just to like, you know, where should I go find my vendor? Like a better question to me would be, do you recommend this place to find a vendor? Like don't just, you know, go to somebody else and expect them to give you all the information that you should be researching. So I say the first thing that you should do is research research everything about the business that you're going to start next question would you purchase a vendor from someone when starting a business this is a topic that I, I ain't gonna say I've been talking about to other people like on my social media and stuff but like to like my like friends and family about I personally would not purchase a vendor for nobody me personally that's just my opinion. I would not. But for anybody who's out there wanting to purchase a vendor, if that's your, you know, prerogative, you want to do that, you do that. I honestly think that I'm going to start selling vendors. But I personally wouldn't do it because to me, I feel like if you take 30 minutes out your day, you could find what somebody's about to sell to you, honestly. 30 minutes, maybe more than 30 minutes, maybe like an hour. It takes, it takes a good time to find vendors. But... The only reason why I say that I wouldn't is because I took the time out to do it, to save that money. It took me, maybe, for my hair, it took me two tries to find the perfect vendor for me. But with my lashes, like, literally, it was a one-stop shop. I found my vendor the first, you know, the first try. But for some people, it might take them a couple tries. They might be dishing out money, so they want to buy a vendor now. But I feel like if you have the, the time and the money to do it, do it yourself. But if you want to spend that money to get somebody else to do it for you, you can do that also. But me personally, I just wouldn't. But if that's what you, you know, if you just don't want to look up for stuff, then you do it. Can I be telling people that like, you can make money off of people who are either lazy or just, just don't have the time. But me personally, I wouldn't do it. Next question, how much money you spent to start your business? So, for me to start my last business, I started my last business June 2017. That's literally two, almost two years ago. I, I think I, I probably spent like, let me see. I got two different styles of lashes and I got like five pair each. So I probably spent like maybe fifty dollars, no more than fifty dollars, to start that to start selling lashes. Like it was literally not too much, but for me to start selling hair, cause literally I like to keep a lot. I like to keep my stuff on hand. That's one of my um, what's the word? One of my advantages over the competitors in my area. I keep most of my um inventory on hand. That was around no more than i would say it was around six hundred dollars for me to start i got two of each length from 12 to 22 inches no i got one of each length i got 
two textures, straighten body wave, one of each inch, and one closure, 12 to 16 inches, I think. And that was around $600. Me and my mama went half. So I always tell people, like, she's pretty much 50% owner of my business because she literally went in and put in 50% for me to start that with my hair. So altogether, it was no more than, like, 650 for me to start hair and lash business basically um next question did you ever feel like giving up on your business honestly yeah <laughs> i done sat there like i done sat and cried i'm emotional as i don't know what i done cried about my business i done stressed myself out about my business i done been depressed some days like you can ask my friends like I done sat with my friends at school, like, why is everything going so slow? Like, people around me, they're moving, 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 and, you know, stuff is just happening for them. Why is it not happening for me? Like, y'all, at least I have a mental breakdown about my business, like, once a week. Once a week. But I wouldn't give up on my business because I done invested too much in my business. I done invested too much time and everything. I put my all into my business, so either my business is going to ride me out and she gonna you know return something to me or we're just gonna be stuck in the same spot i'm just not gonna let go though because you know i have a plan and i have a vision i feel like one day my business is gonna take off and it's gonna you know it's gonna be worth all this stress that i put myself through but i wouldn't actually give up on my business but do i ever feel like giving up i do but i'm not going to so that's you know i feel like if you if you're really passionate about you know your business then you wouldn't give up on it honestly if you start a business and you give up on it it's because it wasn't meant to be from the job that that particular business venture that you went on wasn't for you but if you still feel like a business is for you it's just not that one just try another one but i wouldn't actually give up i wouldn't give up on sin city beauty okay next question how do you deal with unhappy customers Honestly, I haven't had unhappy customers with my, excuse me, with my lash business. My lashes are, they're great. As long as you take care of them, they last. Like these, I've been wearing these probably since I came out with this style. And that was in February. This is Sugar Baby. She was a part of the Valentine's Day um, debut thingy I did. So I had these since february and they still they're still holding on strong with my hair when i had my first vendor i started my hair business in september of 2018 my first vendor the hair was good for the price it was good for the price but i had problems with the hair napping up in the back and i i just could not and the hair it didn't smell great when it was washed and i just I just didn't want that to be on my name of hair. So I did have a few, I would say, negative comments about that, about the hair. But I even noticed it myself, so I wasn't really upset. But with my, and with my wigs, I will say, I don't, I have unhappy customers, but it's not to the point where it's just like, oh, I hate my wig. Da, da, da. It will be more of like, oh, this happened. Or every, I'll probably say every blue moon, like somebody will hit me up like hey a track came loose or something like that and all i do is well bring it to me i'll fix it for you right up like just give great customer service that's how i deal with it i give great customer service i might talk junk but never to my customers i would just say either talk to myself talk to my friends but to my customer they would think i'm just here to help whatever whatever your problem is i'm going to fix it but to my friends it's just like it can't be no problem like come on now what are they talking about but to them they would never know because number one thing in a business, you have to have great customer service. Word of mouth is what's going to get your business out there. Word of mouth. So make sure you don't have no, negative, no negativity on your name, none of that. Because that's what people are going to talk about. Negative stuff will be told faster than positive stuff. So just keep things positive and just help your customers. That's how I deal with um, unhappy customers. I make them happy. That's all you can do next question what's your shipping process 
So my shipping process, basically, I get an order from my site. It goes to the app, and it'll, like, pop up, hey, you got an order of this however much amount. I click on it and see what, you know, what they ordered and whatever else. And then I'll go to my inventory set up in my house. Excuse me. I'll go there. I will pick out whatever they ordered. If it's hair, I'll get those bundles or closures or whatever they ordered pack it up and put in two to three business cards i don't know why i got a burp so bad two to three business cards one thank you um little flyer thing that i have that also has a discount code for your next order and i think that's all i put in there and then i just seal it up I'll go to the front and if you got regular shipping or free shipping if you ordered um with my lashes if you order a, order a certain amount you get free shipping but if you don't you order like one lash ship is like five dollars so I just go ahead and write out your stuff on the front but if you get priority shipping then I get a priority mail sticker write your stuff up there or if I have priority mail um poster things I'll just put in a priority mail thing and write on there and then I'll just ship it off and just take it to the post office. I'll pay whatever little fee it is and get it sent off. It's nothing really major just yet because I don't have a lot of packages and stuff. But for my lashes, every now and again, I'll have like little bags to put them in. But I get them like sporadically just, just to see how they work. See if people actually like, you know, like and appreciate that or whatever. But my packaging will get better as I expand my business and my shipping process will be more extravagant you know when i get when i expand but right now it's really simple nothing too much next question what are some good places where are some good places to find vendors honestly i was i say there's like three places three places three good places to look and find vendors one is instagram instagram is full of chinese vendors trying to get people to buy their products literally they will dm you all you got to do is post pictures and use hashtags where they can find you like hair um bundles weave whatever you're looking for and they'll find you through those hashtags and start dming you and they will they're going to bother you that's one good place another place is this place called Allo. Allo is either Alaba or Alibaba, something like Baba, it's something like that. That's a good place. Literally, there's vendors for everything. Whatever your heart desire, it's a vendor up there. So Instagram, Alaba or Alibaba, and AliExpress, honestly. All you have to do is when you're up there, just if let's say somebody has some really good hair you see in public, ask where they got the hair from. Oh, I got it for AliExpress. Do you know the name of the vendor or the name of the person you got it from? And when you get their name, just literally don't purchase the hair. E like message them. If you can scroll down and it'll say message seller, message them and just ask them about their wholesale prices. And boom. Like they're a vendor. It's just that they're on AliExpress selling the product, but they can be a vendor to you. Some of them just have crazy like purchasing prices some of them want you to buy like a hundred bundles to get the wholesale price and some of them just want you to buy one their shipping might be a little more expensive but you don't have to buy a thousand bundles just to get a wholesale price so those are three good places to find vendors um next question do you prefer to have your products on hand or to drop ship as i already said i like to keep my products on hand because i feel like that is a advantage over my competitors a lot of them drop ship around my area and some products i do drop ship just because i just can't afford to keep them on hand but my more popular items i do keep on hand like my 613 here i don't keep on hand but probably in the next i'll say six months to a year i want to have everything that i have on my site on hand like if you order it it's going to ship out either same day or next day, depending on what time you order it. But right now, I like to keep everything on hand. I choose that over drop shipping, but I do also do drop shipping. And then my last question that I got for this video is when creating a website, what's the first thing that you did? The first thing I did when I created my website, 
what I the first thing that I did, I just created a website. I used Big Cartel because it was free for five products, and that's all I had. I think I had two pair of lashes. No, no, no. When I started my website, I maybe had three pair of lashes, and then that's when I had my straight and body wave hair. And that was my five free things that I could put on my Big Cartel website. But my advice would be to to get your domain first. Buy your domain. Do not be sitting there with your website saying www cncitybeauty.bigcartel.com no because if you can have your business for a year not have your domain and then when you go to go buy your domain somebody else done got it because they seen how good your business was doing so now they want to jump on that train and get it before you do i say get your domain first that's my advice to you guys get your domain first when creating your website so that's the last question for this video. If you have any questions that I maybe didn't get to or didn't answer, you can always comment down below and I will answer it in maybe another video. I might do like a get ready with me, you know, Q&A or whatever. But just comment down below and I'll make sure to get to you guys. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video or these type of videos, make sure you like and comment down below to let me know. And hopefully I will see you guys in the next one. This is Sin signing off. I love you guys. Make sure you check in the description box for a coupon code for all my YouTube um, viewers and subscribers. Just for thanking y'all for supporting me. And this is Sin signing off. Peace. Sin, Sin City wasn't made for you. Angels like you.